Hey everyone, welcome back to TK's Tech Talk. I'm TK and this is TTKK, or better known as The Trusty Kitchen Life. And today we're going to be unboxing and setting up this Quad M.2 expansion card from QNAP. This is the QM24P384, so I believe it's a PCIe 3x8 slot, as you can see pictured here in the box, and it can support four M.2 SSDs in one device. So the main benefit of a card like this is that it does not require bifurcation from the PCIe slot like other cards. You'll see like the Asus M.2 HyperCard or something similar, they will require that your PCIe slot have bifurcation and they're usually 16x slot and they're bifurcated in four ways to allow for four drives to work at PCIe Gen 3x4. So that is definitely much higher bandwidth than what this card can provide. But what if you don't have that 16x slot? Or what if you don't have bifurcation, but you wish to add more storage using M.2? Well, this is the solution for that. Or at least we're gonna find out if this works in a PCIe 3x4 slot on my Z690 motherboard. Okay, so let's get this box open. Cut that tape away and take a quick look inside. Oh, a bit fiddly this one. We'll get there. And there we go. We have some bedtime reading, though maybe it's not so much bedtime reading, we might get some useful information out of that, though I believe most of it should be pretty self-explanatory. We have a small faceplate without the L bracket. This will be used inside a NAS because it doesn't have the L bracket inside to install that. Then we have the typical PC full-size slot to install inside a PC, which is gonna be for our use. And then we have the main star of the show and just to make sure there's nothing else in the box. Main star of the show, this is the card. And underneath that, there are some accessories. Looks like we've got the thermal pads and the screws. And let's get this out of the packaging. And there it is. Didn't want to bore you with all that wrapping. Right, so this is the main device. We have a heatsink there for the chipset massive heatsink here and fan for the four M.2s that are gonna go underneath. And this is that PCI 3X8 connector. So of course, this is not gonna give you a full bandwidth for three full speed X4 drives. But like I said, for a NAS or for a PC, which only has an X4 or an X8 slot, this would be a great way to add storage by using a single PCIe expansion card. And let's have a quick look at the underside. Nothing too exciting, just the main chipboard. So let me grab a screwdriver and remove these screws so we can have a look under the heatsink. Okay, so let's remove these four screws. Don't think they come out, I think they're actually threaded onto the heatsink. We'll check that in a second. Okay, all the screws are loosened. They are indeed attached to the heatsink, so they don't need to be removed. I would recommend removing the fan header, but I'm gonna leave it on for now. There are some pads here which are protecting the SSD slots and I'm guessing to maintain the height when SSDs are not in use. And you can also see the temperature sensors here. So I'm gonna remove these black pads and let me get some drives and we can get testing. Okay, so the pads have been removed and I have installed four NVMe drives as you can see here. Two WD Black SN770 one terabyte drives which are both PCIe Gen 4 drives. And on the right, we have two PCIe Gen 3 drives. The bottom one is a Sebrent Rocket one terabyte, and the top one is a Patriot P310 1.92 terabyte. I have also decided to remove the heatsink and the fan because I don't want to mess about with the thermal pads in case something doesn't work. So let's get this installed inside the PC. Okay, so we're inside my PC, and you can see this bottom slot here is a PCIe X16 slot, and it's pinned out as a PCIe X4 slot. Now, if you have a motherboard which has a PCIe X4 slot, which is open-ended, not like this closed-ended port here, you will still be able to use a PCIe X8 card, and that is true for any open-ended slot, and you will find that used in, in, I think, in other QNAP NAS devices, as well as some workstations. So this is an MSI Z690 Edge 4 Wi-Fi D4, so let me get that card inside, and we can see how it looks. And that's the card installed inside the PC right there, and let's see if it boots up and detects those drives. 
Now the reason we're here looking at the card with the drives as opposed to seeing if it's detected in Windows is because when I tried to boot with all of these four drives populated, the PC did not boot or it took a very long time to boot and once we were into Windows, I could only see the two WD black drives. So I tried various configurations, tried moving the drives around, tried removing the WD blacks, tried only with the Sebrant rocket, tried only with the P310 and there is a problem. It seems that these two drives based on the Fryzon controller do not work. All of the drives here are DRAMless, so it's not a DRAMless drive issue. But these two drives are based on, I think, similar Fryzon controllers, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to check the exact specs. But these drives do not get detected at all. It takes a long time for the PC to post when these two drives are connected. When they are not connected, the PC boots absolutely fine. So this is just something to think about if you're planning to use this card, if you're planning to use with Fryzon drives, if you already have Fryzon drives, if you're planning to buy Fryzon drives, do bear this in mind that try and find out if, there is, if these drives are compatible. To the best of my knowledge, when checking the QNAP compatibility list, there are no Fryzon drives listed, and that could be that the controller or the switch on this card does not support those drives. So for now, to get around this issue, we're gonna remove these two drives, unfortunately, and we're gonna replace them with the Samsung 970 Evo Plus, one terabyte, and Crucial P5 Plus, one terabyte. So let's get these sticky pads off, being mindful of that temperature sensor. It's just a bit sticky in the middle. Some of them are stuck down quite hard, so just be careful as you take them off. That one got a bit damaged in the middle there. So I'm gonna slot in the Crucial P5 Plus and the Samsung 970 Evo Plus. I'm gonna screw them both in and let's see if we can get booting without post issues and also see if all the drives are recognized. Okay. Good news, the PC booted up just fine. All the drives seem to have been detected. So here is the Crucial P5, the 970 EVO Plus SN770 and another SN770. Now I'm just gonna quickly swap out this Crucial P5 for a SN850 because this Crucial P5 is actually an OS drive from my other PC and I wanna be able to create one volume with all four drives to see what sort of speed we can achieve. So let me do that and we'll be right back. Okay, SN850 is in. You can see it here, the 770, the 770, and the 970 EVO plus 1TB, all 1TB drives are still visible. So let's go into disk management. And there we go, we can see our disks are detected as five, six, seven, and eight. So let's initialize them as GPT, click okay. And let's just expand this up so that we can see our drives. And here they are have a look again five six seven and eight all initialized okay now let's create a volume on each of these drives so we're going to do that by a new volume select a drive letter new volume is fine click finish formatted with ntfs and the drive is created so let me do that for all of them okay now you can see each of the discs five six seven and eight have a drive letter f g h and i and we can see that in file explorer f g h and i all one terabyte now let me open a crystal disk mark for each of these and we can test the speed. Right, so I'm running four instances of crystal disk mark for F, G, H, and I, and I'm gonna try and start them all more or less at the same time. Of course, it's gonna be impossible, but let's just see what happens. One, two, three, four. I'll come back when the results are finished. Okay, so the tests have finished. I've only done the sequential for now. And we can see here that the results are a bit all over the place, but it's sort of what we expect because the maximum we're gonna get is around 4,000 mega second. And I'm guessing that maybe this one was a bit higher because the other one's finished first. I'm not really sure. Uh, but basically all four drives are working at about 1,000 mega second read and write, which is pretty good. So let's do all the tests on one of the drives on its own and see what sort of throughput we get. Okay, I run the test individually on three different drives. So the top left one here is the FN770 and we're getting around 3,500 megasecond, even though it's a PCIe Gen 4 drive, so we can see that we are limited by that PCIe 3x4 internal connector, even though the card is a PCIe 3x8. So the bottom drive here is the SN850, again, limited by the PCIe 3x4 to 3,500 megabytes per second, and the same story here on the right uh, for the 970 EVO Plus, and you can see that the Western Digital Drives do benefit from that higher IOPS, so that's still a good thing to see. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just close all of these sessions. I'm gonna go back into disk management and I'm going to delete all the partitions and I'm gonna create a storage space 
uh, which will allow us to have a parity drive, which is the way that I intend to use this card, and so that we will have some sort of redundancy if one of the drives fails. So let me just delete all these volumes and I'll be back. Okay, so all four drives are now unallocated, as you can see here, five, six, seven, eight, unallocated. And we're gonna go into control panel. We're gonna look for storage spaces and we're gonna create a new pool story and storage space. Click yes. And here you can see our four drives, the SN770, 970 EVO Plus, SN850 and the SN770. Create pool. If you don't get this screen, you need to restart your computer. If it's the first time initializing the drive, it might give you an issue. So for now, we're just gonna select the defaults. We're gonna select parity, and you can see we're gonna be able to use 2.4 terabytes. And we can increase that if you wanna add more drives later, but just for simplicity, I'm gonna keep it exactly as it is for now. So I'm gonna click create storage space, and it's given us a drive letter H. And we can see that here is 2.4 terabytes. So let's open Crystal Disk Mark again, and we're gonna to go to drive H, and we're gonna run all of the tests and see what we get. Okay, so the results are in, and what you will notice straight away is that the read speeds are all excellent. The random IOPS is slowed down by the SN, sorry, the 970 EVO Plus drive to around 400,000 IOPS, but the write speeds are considerably slower. Now, this might be something to do with the way in which the parity works. It could be to do with the difference in the disks. I'm not really sure, but I believe it's more to do with that RAID or parity setup. So maybe if you're planning on setting something like this up, uh, use the same drives, you probably get slightly better performance out of that. But I have noticed in the past as well that using this parity option or RAID 5 option, you do get a, a slower performance on the write speed, but still at 1000 megabytes per second, using a PCIe Express slot to expand your storage and to have some sort of redundancy is not bad at all. Okay, so I've deleted the storage space and we're gonna do one final test. We're gonna create a new span volume, which is like a RAID 0. So it's gonna use all of our drives. We're gonna add five, six, seven, and eight and create one large storage pool from quick format and next. And it's gonna to ask to delete. Okay, so our F drive is created. So let's head over to Crystal Disk Mark and run a benchmark and see what we get. Okay, the test has completed and this time we can see that we're getting respectable scores, 3,500 megasecond for read and write. And then for the read, the random speed seemed to have slowed down as compared to a single disk. But for the write, we seem to have slightly improved performance. I'm guessing this is to do with the way in which the span volume or the RAID 0 configuration works. It's still a respectable score for a single drive if you're going to use it like that. And it definitely gives you a way to expand your storage, whether you're going to use this method or you're going to use the parity like we did in the previous example. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Please feel free to ask any questions. In the meantime, please feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.